Special thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. There's a new bird of prey over Vietnam, and it's unlike any other aircraft ever built before. It's a transformer. Arriving at 500 miles per hour to the combat zone, it quickly deploys its internal rotor blades, coming to a drifting stop like a helicopter over the jungle. Teams deploy inside on a covert mission, and before the Viet Cong are wise, it's already back in friendly territory. For the US war effort in Southeast Asia, the new Lockheed Miracle helicopter plane seemed to be the game changer they desperately needed. But this great idea had a little problem of being horribly complex, heavy and expensive. This is the incredible Lockheed flying car. Back at base camp, you couldn't imagine what your eyes were seeing. For one, this new aircraft had a large tri-bladed rotor on top of capable of heavy lifting and hovering over the battlefield. But it gets better. These rotors had the ability to fold away and reach speeds a helicopter could only dream of. The rear had a door on each side that could be opened for rescue teams on the ground and to provide light arms fire if needed, with a tail rotor at the end to give it the maneuverability of a helicopter when it was hovering. With range and speed on its side, the Lockheed car could fly into battle, perform its mission and zip out before the enemy was even the wiser. And you're probably wondering, why on earth did the US Army even need this insane thing? Well, it was to solve the issue of losing pilots to the enemy. Now, I don't mean killed in action, but rather saving pilots who bailed out after losing the fight in the sky and preventing their capture by the opponent's ground forces. While a typical fighter jet can cost millions of dollars, it was even more expensive to train up a replacement pilot and have them sit around in a prisoner of war camp, or God forbid, be executed. It was definitely not an appeasing thought for the US military. And thus, the US Army needed a solution to this tricky problem. An aircraft that could rapidly arrive to a downed pilot in the middle of the jungle, then land or deploy a rescue team without a runway, and then bug out before the Viet Cong arrived. And it would need to fly like a jet, but hover like the helicopter. So in typical fashion, the US Army put out a competition called CAR, either dubbed the Combat Aircrew Rescue Aircraft or the Composite Aircraft Retractable Rotor Program, depending on who you ask, and invited the usual aerospace firms to design such an aircraft. This aircraft was essentially a transformer like right out of the movies. But unlike the movies, your own business transformation doesn't have to be fiction, thanks to Squarespace and their brand new fluid engine. But hold on, hold on, don't skip this part as I'll have some sneak peeks for future videos. You see, you start with a best in class website template and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology. And you don't even have to make two sites for desktop or mobile. You can stretch your imagination online with the Fluid Engine and it's built in and ready to go with any new Squarespace site. Plus, that's not all. Every site that they have on Squarespace has a built-in shop to start selling right away and you can use the campaign marketing tools to start driving business instantly. Seriously, Squarespace is the secret weapon that even I use for my online store, www.foundandexplain.shop. Thanks, Squarespace! If you want to be just like me, or perhaps you just want to support the channel and see more videos just like this, and then also get 10% off your first site and domain, go to www.squarespace.com found. I'm excited for your success in the business world, and a special warm hug to all those who click the link to keep helping make videos just like this. In the stowed rotor concept, the aircraft takes off vertically as a helicopter and during transition gradually shifts the load from the rotor to the wing. Speed greater than the stall speed of the wing, the rotor is completely unloaded, stopped and then folded and are attracted and covered with fairings to convert to the airplane configuration. With this concept in mind, and it being the 1960s, the various firms came back with some very interesting designs indeed. 
Sokolsky was one of the first to submit a proposal for an aircraft that could fly up to 400 knots, a good 250 knots more than the Army's current helicopters operating in Vietnam. They also came up with another concept called the XV-2 that had an asymmetrical retractable rotor, something that I've never seen before. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a full video on it. Then there was also the North American Aviation Concept, who would work with Sokoski to develop a plane that had helicopter blades on top, with themselves providing the jet aircraft features. PR Setsky was quick to follow up with the PH-51 and PH-55 that both featured a retractable rotor on top of the aircraft. Interestingly, the PH-51 didn't actually feature a tail plane, but two smaller tails to give the larger rotor diameter. Marchetti Lafa was next to the table with what looks like a Boeing 727 with helicopter blades, but these ones were actually telescopic as well as retracting. Marchetti would also be developing a stoppable rotor that could also double as a wing, but that's a story for another time, so be sure to subscribe. But our hero of the story, Lockheed, was the most successful. High off the fumes with whatever they were smoking in the 60s, I mean just look at some of these designs, they came up with some very unique helicopter concepts that could do the job. Called the CL-945 stowed rotor aircraft, Lockheed would actually propose three different versions. The first proposal was the CL-945-1 that had a main rotor on top, a pusher prop on the end of the tail for horizontal flight, and then a tail rotor stolen from the AH-56 Cheyenne. This one didn't actually retract the blades, but just let them naturally fold back at the aircraft when it got up to a faster and faster speed. Lockheed knew that this wasn't the optimal design, and it's rare that the first version is ever accepted, so they went back to the drawing board to come up with a double variant on the second proposal. The CL-945-2 made the leap to store the rotor blades when the aircraft got up to flight, reducing the drag when at speed. The real prop was dropped in favour for either prop engines suspended under each wing or turbofans for jet propulsion, which would have seriously increased its power. And just how fast did Lockheed think this would go? up to 800 kilometers per hour, or just shy of 500 miles per hour. That's tripled the speed of the helicopter that the military was fielding at the time. It would have two crew members and a side door that search and rescue teams could repel from to enter the jungle. Lockheed also had several extra options to add to the aircraft. A rear loading ramp for one that could be used when it arrived at the scene and needed to land to deploy troops or transport cargo. There was also the option to sling cargo loads under the aircraft, able to carry a light troop carrier. Now, I have my doubts about this one as the carrying weight of this aircraft was light, but I'll get to that in a moment. There was also a proposal to add guns and missiles to the thing to turn it into a gunship, but as Lockheed was also developing the Cheyenne at the same time, this would have been a direct competitor, and I think they really didn't push it. The concept was also shot to the Navy, and a few mock-ups were done in Navy livery. But we have few and far between the details of what this would have entailed, but like the planned operations of the jungle, it would have seen great use as a rescue aircraft on board an aircraft carrier. But Lockheed wasn't just satisfied for military applications for the Army and Navy, but also suggested that it would have civil applications of this aircraft as well. They would rename the CL-954 the Lockheed Air Commuter, and they believed that with the right configuration, they could carry anywhere from 60 to 120 passengers between various cities along the US coast. At that top speed of 500 miles per hour, this would easily find a market in northeastern USA between the cities of New York, Boston, and Washington DC. Lastly, Lockheed would expand this concept over to the CL-1060, a proposal for a sky crane helicopter that could also carry 20 tons or 150 passengers as part of their larger commuter helicopter dreams. It seems Lockheed was onto a winner and the military was excited. So what happened? <laughs> 
The military was impressed enough to grant further funding to Lockheed, who would go on to work with NASA to develop small-scale tests, using a 40 by 80 foot wind tunnel. They managed to get the stowed rotor to start, stop and fold, working with their rigid motor at speeds up to 140 knots. Shy of the 400 knots promised before, but still significantly fast. But there were some teething issues. The first was the weight. A retractable system like this is super heavy and would have penalized the aircraft's carrying capacity. It wouldn't have been able to carry much and the sling concept was laughable. You see, Lockheed believed that this would have a carrying capacity of 31,000 pounds, but that's still not very much to the Chinook's capacity of 50,000 pounds. Secondly, any retracting system was incredibly complex and prone to malfunction, and this was the pinnacle of over-the-top engineering. It took up a ton of space on the aircraft, and if it broke down, the aircraft would be grounded. A normal helicopter didn't have to deploy its rotors to fly, and therefore skip this stage entirely. By 1967, NASA recommended further engineering work, relying less on new technology, but ingenuity and inventiveness to make this concept work, with an eventual prototype or research vehicle to test the concept. Alas, it seems that this never happened, and the military moved on to VTOL jets and tilt rotor aircraft like the V-22, and the stowed rotor aircraft concept never eventuated. Although we did see it appear in a half-decent Arnold Schwarzenegger film decades later, so perhaps good ideas always find their way back. In typical Cold War fashion, this concept was also replicated on the other side of the Iron Curtain in the USSR. Russia actually came up with two versions of this idea of a plane helicopter that even had a large turret on the bottom. A whole video that you can watch right now on the channel. Special thanks to Scott Lawther from Aerospace Projects Review who provided the original blueprints of this program and came up with the fantastic line used in the intro of this little problem being horribly complex, heavy and expensive.